welcome. Uh, this is uh, module 7 uh, and uh, we are going to start the solution of boundary value problems in elasticity. And uh, in this uh, module, we will discuss about the problems in flexure. Flexure is uh, means uh, basically the bending. Uh, the bending uh, problems we are doing from our uh, knowledge of uh, mechanics, uh, from the basic mechanics we have uh, done the bending problems. So, uh, the objective of this module is to find out what are the uh, basically the difference between the theory of elasticity approach and the usual strength of material approach, where we have already uh, solved uh, bending of beams. Uh, uh, or the flexural and found out the flexural stresses, uh, what are the uh, uh, values of shear stresses and all those things we have already found out. But if you remember uh, the bending uh, problems uh, for beams we have solved for one dimensional uh, uh, body. So, where the cross section and the uh, cross sectional uh, um, uh, uh, geometry is uh, very less compared to the uh, length direction uh, um, length of the beam. Um, so, that means uh, less, less means the effect of stresses and all other things are very uh, uh, negligible. So, uh, that assumption actually uh, also uh, uh, the standard Euler Bernoulli uh, beam assumption for pure bending that is the plane sections remain plane before bending and after bending and all those things we know from our strength of material knowledge. But what here what we will do we will uh, just extend it to for two dimensional beam. If the beam is two dimensional that means the um, thickness direction or the um, width direction or any of the direction uh, if we relax that uh, condition or if we uh, uh, take the uh, um, changes or the proper uh, um, values of the stresses in that direction. So, what will happen uh, in that case for our beam theory. Uh, so, uh, to start with uh, we will uh, go for uh, some basic uh, uh, recap which already you have done for uh, plane strain and uh, boundary value problems. So, governing differential equation for a two dimensional uh, body uh, is generally this. So, these uh, quantities are B x and B y are body force and with this, uh, this is the um, you have to have the uh, boundary condition which is the traction boundary condition uh, something like this. So, if uh, this is the normal uh, direction then you have the T x and T y uh, is the um, uh, traction uh, forces and this is your x y system. So, uh, we will be basically doing for 2 D system right now. So, uh, uh, the differential equation or the uh, basic uh, governing equation for the solids will be 2 dimensional and so we know the uh, what are the um, Mm, these two differential equation. Now, these B x and B y these are actually the body force. Now, if we only take the self weight of the beam as body force that means the uh, or self weight of the continua is the only body force that means it is rho g is the uh, self weight and rho is the uh, density. So, this will look like this. So, B x component will be 0 and B y will be uh, rho g. So, with this and two boundary conditions uh, this L of sigma x x m of sigma x y. So, L m uh, we know that is the direction cosines. Uh, so, um, uh, we all uh, aware of these uh, um, uh, boundary conditions right now. So, now uh, uh, we know these uh, governing differential equation. So, as well as we also know from our uh, uh, previous uh, lectures that is the uh, compatibility equations. So, the compatibility equations uh, uh, for uh, we have discussed de in detail this. So, I will just uh, recap this compatibility equation uh, which we will be using here. Uh, uh, um, so, this compatibility equation for two dimensional body is uh, related to this 
which is uh, del squared epsilon x x del y square del square epsilon y y del x square equals to the del square gamma x y del x del y. So, these uh, equations uh, if we now uh, substitute with the stresses that is if we invoke the Hooke's law for uh, isotropic elastic solids with uh, Poisson's ratio and Young's modulus. And uh, if we write these strains in, in terms of stresses, then we get for a plain stress case and plain strain case two different uh, right hand side and which will lead to this. Now, interestingly, if you hmm, look carefully that if b x and b y at 0, then these two uh, conditions becomes uh, hmm, or even b x and b y are constant, these two these compatibility country conditions are same for the plane stress and plane strain and which will simply uh, be like this that is del square um, by del x square plus del square by del y square into sigma x x plus sigma y y equals to 0, because the uh, even if b x and b a b y uh, are um, uh, constant uh, or uh, 0, um, b x b y are constant or 0. So, that means, the if it is constant the first derivative will be 0. So, these quantities essentially will be 0. So, these quantities will be 0 and this will be the compatibility equation. So, essentially uh, you have uh, this compatibility equation and uh, the boundary uh, um, the um, uh, governing equation which we have discussed in the previous slide. So, these two uh, uh, these three equation along with the boundary condition uh, we have the governing uh, equation for the two dimensional solids. So, since here we will be talking about the stress formulation. So, this compatibility equation is important for us. So, this also has been discussed in the previous lecture. Now, um, uh, uh, if we uh, uh, have uh, um, uh, remembered what is the stress uh, formulation or uh, the stress uh, uh, based approach for solving the uh, two dimensional problem or three dimensional problems. So, we will be mostly talking about the stress function approach. So, stress function approach uh, also uh, we have discussed which is uh, uh, governing equation uh, for two dimensional problem will lead to a biharmonic equation which is a uh, del to the power 4 uh, um, phi equals to 0. The short form is essentially del to the power 4 phi equals to 0. So, this is the biharmonic equation we uh, 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 solve and phi is essentially the stress function and this stress function when the body force is 0 is defined like this. Uh, so, sigma x x remember this is uh, in terms of y and sigma y y is in terms of x. So, del square phi del y square is sigma x x del square phi del x square is sigma y y and sigma x y or the shear stress is essentially del x del, del square phi by del x del y. So, this phi is essentially known as the stress function. Now, uh, this can also be uh, suitably modified for the uh, self weight of the body uh, in case uh, in that case b y will be rho g and this will be just minus rho g h and minus rho g h in sigma x x and uh, rho g y and rho g y in the sigma uh, x x and sigma y y. So, this biharmonic equation if you look carefully there are few um, uh, important thing here. So, if we want to find out phi or if you have taken phi properly, you see there is no need to uh, invoke uh, material uh, constant or material uh, knowledge of the material. So, essentially uh, the stresses when we uh, find out stresses, stresses becomes independent of material. So, this uh, is very um, interesting uh, for this formula uh, because uh, formulation because this biharmonic equation if we solve we essentially get the phi 
Now, phi from this phi, we take the appropriate derivatives of phi and then uh, we uh, get into this um, uh, sigma xx, sigma yy and sigma xy. So, naturally, uh, we can approximate phi as a polynomial and then uh, find out the all stresses. So, um, this uh, sigma stresses will be essentially independent of material. So, uh, this is very interesting fact that we do not need to know the material uh, a priori to find out the stresses. So, that is one important uh, issue here, but one should also remember that that does not mean that material does not come into uh, the uh, phi uh, material does not come into picture. So, essentially phi is uh, uh, yeah, the stresses are independent of uh, material constant, but when you start uh, finding out the displacement there the uh, material laws or the material uh, behavior comes into picture. For instance, once you find out the stress sigma then you probably uh, want to find out the uh, epsilon or the uh, strains and when you do find out the strains uh, you need to uh, incorporate the constitutive behavior. So, uh, constitutive uh, behavior. Uh, constitutive laws. So, and uh, uh, when you find out the strains, then essentially you find out the displacement. So, that is a complete cycle. So, first you uh, find out stress by solving the biharmonic equation and then uh, from that stress you essentially find out uh, strains uh, where actually you are plugging the constitutive uh, behavior or constitutive laws and then you solve uh, for the uh, displacement or the u v and w uh, for the our case here uh, u v. So, remember that this uh, solution of phi also incorporates this um, boundary conditions. So, the boundary conditions needs to be satisfied. So, this uh, is uh, in a nutshell the stress function approach. We have already uh, discussed this for a stress function uh, this stress function approach. Uh, now, what we will do? We will uh, give some uh, example of uh, stress function. For instance, uh, let us consider a second order polynomial as a stress function. Now, if you look carefully, this biharmonic equation is a fourth order equation. Now, any second order uh, polynomial will automatically satisfy this equation. So, not only that, any third order polynomial it will also uh, satisfy this uh, equation. Now, if we uh, uh, compute the stresses uh, which is essentially uh, del square uh, sigma x x is del square phi uh, del x square uh, del y square which is uh, if you take the derivative you get the constant which is c. Now, um, similarly sigma y y uh, you get a. Um, so, and sigma x y is minus b. So, uh, this uh, three constant represent different type of stresses in the boundary of the uh, solids. For instance, if there is a uh, rectangular body, uh, two dimensional rectangular body and in this direction this is a x direction and this is y direction and then uh, uh, essentially you have uh, sigma x x uh, is c that means there is a constant uh, stress in this uh, phase and constant. So, this is essentially the uh, um, tension and compression. The sign does not matter because I can take the constant negative or positive whatever it is. So, uh, uh, here um, so uh, that means tension and compression both are covered through this uh, thing and similarly uh, the sigma x y the shear stress is essentially this. Uh, these are shear stress in the body. Now, if I take specifically the A and C both of them are 0 and then um, if b is not equals to 0 that means my stress function is just only b x y then it will represent a case of pure shear. So, we know the pure shear uh, from our strength of material knowledge. So, this will be there will be no axial force on this thing and uh, um, 
it will represent a pure shear condition. Now, similarly, if we take A and B is 0, but uh, C is not equals to 0, then it will represent a uniaxial tension. So, it can be reversed also. If C and B and 0 and then uh, A is uh, non-zero, then also it will be uniaxial tension. But um, uniaxial tension or compression, both can be uh, modeled. Now, if B is 0, but uh, A and C are not 0, Zero, then it is a biaxial tension or compression. So, one of them can be negative also. Uh, uh, so, this actually the stress functions uh, second order ten, uh, second order polynomial as a stress function uh, allow us to modify or to capture the stress state in the body in a uh, um, uh, very flexible manner. So, uh, this uh, will use it. Now, uh, another uh, hmm, uh, uh, another uh, stress function we can uh, discuss, which is a fourth order uh, uh, stress function, which uh, does not satisfy the uh, Biharmonic equation automatically, because it is a fourth order polynomial. So, now, uh, if we can uh, hmm, uh, compute these derivatives that is uh, del square phi del x to the power 4 and um, all these quantities, then uh, it can be seen that the final uh, quantity becomes this, this has to be 0. So, from there actually we can derive that there are E is dependent on two constants. So, uh, by looking carefully uh, that um, these stress functions contains four such um, uh, constants a, b, c and d uh, and e. You see uh, the way I have written it in, uh, in, a, um, in this manner, this 4 and 3 if you take the derivative this uh, can be uh, cancelled. So, uh, it is not necessary uh, you can write uh, this a uh, is a dash uh, which is a by, a by 4 uh, into 3. So, uh, the um, uh, this is for the ease of our uh, calculation. So, now uh, these four, uh, these five constants essentially are not independent. So, one of them is dependent if it has to satisfy the bi biharmonic equation this. So, finally, um, we have a four unknown constant which is a, b, c and d and e can be written in terms of c and a. So, and this is the relation. So, now this if we um, uh, uh, see this what this uh, fourth order uh, polynomial produce, let us see that. So, um, the stresses uh, will look like uh, this which is uh, very simple uh, because you just take the derivative of the uh, uh, um, stress function phi. So, now this will be my uh, uh, sigma x x similarly sigma y y is x square b x y plus c y square and sigma x y is this. Now, uh, what this uh, complicated uh, stress means uh, is that that sigma x x varies quadratically and sigma y y is also also varying quadratically and then uh, sigma x y is also varying quadratically. Now, uh, for instance, um, if we now take the uh, special case where the only the coefficient d is non-zero and all other um, uh, constant that is a, b, c uh, and essentially e, e is also 2 c plus uh, this is actually the e. Um, which is also 0. So, if we take only d as non-zero, so my stress function will be uh, d by 6 x y cube. Uh, so, now my phi will be essentially d by 6 x y cube. So, now if this is my stress function, then my sigma x x is essentially d x y and sigma y y this will be essentially 0 because there is no such d here and sigma x y uh, that uh, shear stress will be minus d by 2 y square. So, now this um, uh, if we uh, want to uh, check what sort of uh, stress it produce. So, we will see that this uh, produces a um, 
quadratic variation of the shear stress which is at the uh, sigma x x is uh, like this. So, if we uh, now draw a uh, uh, distribution of this shear stress, so it will be like this. So, um, uh, uh, sigma x x if we draw then this is this kind of stress it is producing. So, this is my, so if you remember this is uh, um, very much similar to the uh, bending stress that we observed from the strength of material uh, um, uh, uh, knowledge and the shear stress is essentially quadratically varying. So, if you now uh, look the shear stress distribution along the uh, y it is a parabolic and this is the parabola uh, for the shear stress. So, um, where the uh, shear stress is maximum at y equals to 0 and then uh, uh, we uh, uh, get the um, uh, 0 at the fibers. So, this is the my uh, x, x equals to 0, y equals to 0. So, this is my x axis and this is my y axis. So, uh, essentially um, the distribution of shear stress is like this. So, now you see that uh, this captures the uh, um, our knowledge of uh, uh, strength of materials, this stress function essentially captures one of our knowledge of uh, stress function. So, uh, there are several other types of stress functions uh, also are there which you can go through uh, um, by this book where there are several uh, derivations or several uh, 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 definitions of stress functions are there. So, now uh, let us uh, go for a um, uh, simple uh, uh, beam problem where the uh, um, uh, beam is uh, loaded with a point load or um, uh, essentially the uh, shear force uh, um, at the free end. Let us consider a uh, cantilever beam uh, where uh, this cantilever beam is um, the shear force resultant is essentially P. So, this shear force resultant uh, is acting on the beam and the beam is fixed in this side. So, we will evaluate this condition in a later stage. Now, you see here the beam is essentially three dimensional, uh, it should be ideally three dimensional, but uh, we are considering two dimensional case and so the thickness uh, of the beam is much less than the depth of the uh, beam or which is essentially 2 here, 2 c here. Now, uh, to make our calculation easy, we take T uh, is 1 unit. So, uh, this is 1 unit. So, thickness of the uh, beam we take the 1 unit, which is uh, which can be generalized for T uh, non equals to uh, 1 or uh, any value of T. Essentially, what it means that the depth of the beam is much greater than the um, uh, uh, thickness or the uh, jet direction uh, dimension of the beam. So, which invokes the plane stress condition. So, um, uh, we will be talking about here now this plane stress condition or the plane stress beam. So, uh, th what are the boundary conditions if this uh, um, beam is, uh, 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 this beam we need to solve, then what are the boundary condition? See, the boundary conditions uh, for this uh, from the strength of material concept, we were uh, doing it for one dimensional case and one dimensional case the beam is uh, fixed here which is essentially like this. So, this was our uh, idealized uh, strength of material beam. So, now here what were the boundary condition we used to have? So, we used to have that here the displacement and slopes are 0, but right now what we are doing here? We are doing uh, the stress based approach. So, stress based approach means we need to find out the boundary condition in terms of stresses. Uh, so, uh, here the original boundary condition if you remember that u equals to um, 0 and uh, or uh, v sorry v equals to 0 and del v uh, del x and everything 
equals to 0 at this point. So, slope and deflection is 0 at the uh, built in end or the fixed end. So, this condition uh, is in terms of displacements. So, V is the uh, vertical displacements of the beam uh, which is along the y axis, but here what we need is the stress based boundary condition. Now, you see the boundary of the uh, surface in this surface there is no load. So, there is no load. So, that implies um, that sigma yy uh, and sigma uh, at uh, plus uh, minus c it is 0 and sigma xy also at plus minus uh, y equals to plus minus c that means this zone it is 0 and sigma xx at x equal to so this uh, this phase is there is no horizontal uh, or the along the axis there is no load this uh, implies this and then p uh, is the total resultant shearing force along the y axis which means that uh, that sigma xy t into dy uh, should be integrated from minus c to plus c and this has to be equals to p. So, this t we have taken as 1. So, this becomes the final boundary condition which is p. Uh, which is equals to p. So, now this is these uh, boundary conditions are very different from what you have done here. So, this is uh, based on the stress or stress boundary conditions. So, now um, uh, we will uh, see how we can solve this problem efficiently. For instance, uh, let us say the uh, stress function that we consider uh, uh, is a x y. So, why a x y? Because if you see uh, the moment at any cross section uh, of this cantilever beam say at point here which varies along x. Uh, so, p x is the uh, moment. Now, this p x we also know that moment varies uh, um, along the cross section of the um, uh, at, at a different point of the uh, different point in x uh, this moment varies as p x. Now, uh, if this moment has to be found out here which is at a distance y then that also we know from our uh, flexure formula if you remember that sigma x x is m y by i. So, m is the moment and it depends it varies linearly. So, that is why we take um, this constant a as the uh, unknown constant and the variation of this stress is x y. So, we take uh, sigma x x is a x y. So, this is from our earlier knowledge. Now, if we now integrate uh, this uh, stress uh, or the this differential equation del square phi by del y square equals to a x y then we get this kind of uh, uh, function. Now, remember here phi is a function of x y. So, phi is a function of x and y. So, if you integrate it, so this will be simply um, a integration will be in terms of y. So, uh, a x y cube by 6 and then uh, the first constant will be uh, f and then uh, second constant will be g. Both of these will be function of x because we are, uh, we are um, integrating with respect to y. Now, if we now substitute this phi uh, in the biharmonic equation that is our original equation del 4, del 4 phi equals to 0, it leads to this equation y into this uh, 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 del to the d to the power 4. So, since it is a one variable, so uh, d, d to the power 4 by dx to the power 4 f x and d to the power 4 g x dx to the power 4 equals to 0. Now, see this quantity is purely a x dependent quantity and this quantity is also dependent on x and this multiplied by y uh, plus a purely x quantity has to be 0. So, to satisfy this equation for x y uh, this must be 0 and this must be 0 otherwise it cannot satisfy. So, th this is the condition um, uh, for which this equation is a valid. Now, if we individually take this equals to 0 and integrate to find out f x, f x will be cubic polynomial. So, this will be this and g x will also be this. 
now finally uh, uh, our phi which is uh, which we assumed in this uh, which we assume a x y as a uh, del square phi by del y square and then integrating phi here and so this phi uh, becomes this where a by 6 x y cube and then y into this quantity and this quantity. So, this becomes our complete phi for the uh, beam we are talking about. Now, let us see what happens to this uh, phi if we find out the uh, uh, um, uh, um, but if we invoke the boundary condition of this thing. So, this was the uh, phi we were talking about, this was the phi. Uh, complete phi. Now, this was the uh, stresses and so we can find out once we get the phi then we can find out other stresses. For instance, sigma y y del square phi by del x square which uh, happens to be 6 b y plus 2 c y 6 m plus 2 n x. So, now uh, similarly sigma x y is also uh, we can find out. Now, uh, these constants these a uh, B, C. So, here actually A, B, C, D, E, M, N, O, P all those are constants. So, all these constants we have to find out from the boundary conditions. So, boundary conditions we have discussed the boundary conditions. So, if we uh, invoke uh, these boundary conditions into this. Uh, so, it leads to B, C, M, N, O is essentially 0. So, which uh, again uh, if we plug into these conditions this will leads to this d equals to this minus a by 2 c square. So, you see uh, so b c m n all uh, quantities goes here b c m n these are 0. So, now um, uh, uh, only d is uh, there here d is there and uh, um, uh, d is in terms of a. So, this also we have uh, substituted in terms of a. So, now let us invoke the other boundary condition what uh, if we invoke the other boundary condition how it looks like. So, in uh, the last boundary condition we had this. So, which is essentially um, uh, uh, which is essentially the resultant shearing force. Now, this shearing force uh, sigma x y uh, d y. So, we substitute sigma x y. If you remember uh, uh, the sigma x y then uh, we can uh, uh, if you remember the sigma x y which is uh, minus a by 2 y square and b c uh, all of them are 0, b is 0, c is 0. So, d is in terms of a uh, minus a by 2 c square. So, sigma x y is essentially minus a by 2 uh, y square minus uh, d by uh, minus d. So, minus d is essentially minus a by 2 c square. So, that we substitute here and this uh, 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 goes to and if we solve this uh, then we find out the uh, um, uh, integration uh, this um, uh, constant A which is of this form. So, uh, now here uh, this 3 p by 2 c cube and i is essentially b d cube by 12 that we know from our formula. So, b is essentially 1 here and d is essentially 2 c. Uh, so, if we find out the moment of inertia then which will be 2 third uh, c cube. So, this 2 third c cube we substituted and moment of inertia i. So, it is minus p by i. So, now if you see that sigma x x is minus p by i x y sigma y y is 0 and sigma x y is this. This actually coincides with the uh, hmm, our strength of material uh, knowledge uh, of uh, shear stress, bending stress or the flexural stress sigma x x and the sigma y y. So, this uh, is the same result uh, 
that we have obtained in the uh, from the strength of material concept. Now, this result we obtain from the uh, stress function approach or the theory of elasticity approach. Now, we will see what this uh, in the next lecture we will see what extra things it provides the theory of elasticity approach what extra thing it provides to us. So, uh, I uh, stop here today and um, we will discuss the extra th uh, these uh, concepts uh, to find out the displacement and strains in the next class. Thank you.